including all of the aforementioned changes in fixed costs and such, and uh, the allocation and distribution um, that appear for the town budget and the school budget. Those are already included in here. So and, and I think uh, that everyone should know that the budget that Greg has just presented is essentially balanced based on the Senate worst case budget. Uh, the impact of that uh, and the recent reductions uh, reflect the $280,531 reduction in what the school department has been working for their budget number. Because they have been working on the governor's initial initial budget uh, with the appropriate fixed cost and split. So there's a $280,531 difference that we'll be discussing on Friday at our financial meeting. Uh, question for you, uh, Don. Yeah. Have there been any transfers from the energy portion of the uh, reserve fund reserve this year? Fund. about 54 and, and from which departments public works public works both, in both cases. yeah my recollection was the um, street, lighting. street lighting and uh, fuel building fuel not vehicle fuel heat yeah heat and There's really nothing from the school the electrical Cost has been the thing that, that's really hit us fairly hard. Um, I would only say that, that, that in the time that we've been here, we've been pretty liberal when the citizen requests streetlights. We've been I feel that that's something that the town should look at. We haven't reviewed, but um, you know, going forward, we will obviously be more cautious about that because we can't do it to the extent we did in the past. That's it. Steve, you want it's just in relation to the uh, proposed reduction in the reserve police officers. Um, obviously, we're in a tough situation with the recent passing of Officer Carapinas. So I'm wondering how to fill that position or not fill that position. And, uh, the, the reserve officer force is actually is going good idea and a good thing that we've been able to utilize over the years in relation to uh, hiring uh, reserve force and it gives us a, a good look at the individuals uh, how they would perform as police officers. But we, we've al also been able to utilize reserve officers for filling their shifts, backfilling. And I, I think before we reduce this, we just have to do a little bit more of a cost analysis in relation to filling the vacancy. Are we going to be filling the vacancy? Or should we be augmenting the reserve force and using reserve force a little more liberally? And again, while it might not be the, the wishes of the chief to have that happen from a fiscal mm -hmm. standpoint, we may have to just take a look at mm -hmm. doing the best we can with what we have and maybe this is a way of uh, doing it and backfilling the reserve force to give us more people to draw from to fill shifts at a lower cost. Yeah. And how many reserve offices are currently we have? Six. Five, five or six, I believe, Sean, and, and I will, uh, I'll verify that. And this sure. cut represents how many? One and a half. Yeah. How do we get to a half of a reserve office? Well, the, the number that's established for the reserve office's salary is really just a, mm -hmm. it's an estimate. It's estimated that each reserve officer's salary for the year is twelve thousand dollars, based upon. So, and, and in effect, it would mean two people. Exactly, that's what we would do. Is this a cut of two people, or just not the addition? Just not of one? filling. He, not he, filling. He, he wants it to bring it up to a higher level, okay. and um, so we we'll we wouldn't lose from the five and six that we have now. So, uh, so my only. So there is money, just potentially money in the budget to cover it if you don't. 
still a position that's now vague. Right. There's the one that was um, the monies were transferred out back at the October town meeting that was not filled. So there was one position that we did not fill, and then there's the second. No, I, 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 from from my perspective, I, I know that um, the board has received communication from the chief of police relative to that position. My my view of it We've is also received it from the union. Yes, you have. <laughs> yes, you have. Uh, just just my view of it is, um, with the whole budget situation as unstable as it is, um, there would be no action taken to fill any position until we got into the new fiscal year, and then obviously that would need to be done in, in conjunction with the, the board's position on that because it certainly would. That we can't afford. Hey, are these suggested adjustments on the reserve police officers just as part of the salary line item, or is that a separate line item? No, it's, um, my recollection is it's voted as part of the salary line item. Right, so, okay. So it's really a decision on what's the best It's a staffing, yeah, it's a staffing decision. Yeah, and, and, and I, again, only from my side is I wanted to show that we were at least partially funding the animal control and the school crossing guards from within the police budget. It was important to try to do those things. I didn't realize we cut them out. You didn't, but they were cut out by the department head. Yeah, they, they were uh, cut uh, in the original budget presentations. Well, well I understand right. that we didn't buy into that program. No, 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 we didn't. No, no, I know. No. No. So, I mean, so, so this I, is I, the funding to put it back. But I thought you put I, it back. I didn't realize. I thought, I thought we had decided that it was going to be funded at that particular point right. in time. We did right. not necessarily go with that. And I, and I thought that all these other members I that think were presented you have to, to us included whatever the boards. These are adjustments. Th this is, if you go back to the baseline budget that was presented, these are the adjustments that were made to that. Over time. Based on our wishes. <laughs> Over time, not this evening. Right. The, the, you haven't gotten the detail until this evening. Now, this evening, those numbers are dropped in, but. So far, if you look at the uh, the tricolor sheet, you'll see that the municipal budgets are shown as a lump sum total on the top of page two. That, those changes had been incorporated within that lump sum figure previously. Previously, we uh, just needed to allocate out the dollars. Okay, I just. This, what, I apologize. What I, had for asked, what I had asked for was to bring this whole thing together, and then the, you know the other attachment you have is the detail of the on the side so that all of the transfers and the funding and everything was identified and clear. Yeah, I was just a little confused. I was thinking that maybe this evening is where these adjustments are now currently being reflected, whereas under the impression, currently the correct impression, that these adjustments that we've talked about previously, specifically in relation to the school crossing guards and the criminal control, we'd already put back in, and I thought they were already reflected in the couple, over the last couple of months. These things that we've been getting on a regular basis. Right. We just needed to do it to, to restate it okay. in terms of the. Uh, so a lot of details. some of this is a restatement of what we've already done. Some of it, some of it is, some of it isn't. Some of it's new. I mean, the whole, the whole right. first the piece. The Medicare thing was new to me. The street lights are new. You know, health insurance. Health insurance. Health insurance was new. And the regional vote that came in. Uh, that's and again, the, the Quinn bill really has no net effect on us because that's just the state's portion of what they're exactly. Paying. The, o the only negative effect it could have, Steve, if they decide to, out of the unrestricted money, right. to restrict a portion <coughs> of it for the Quinn bill and not replenish right. it, that will then wear out the 143 or whatever the limit right. needs to be. Yes, sir. Because I thought you did. No, actually, that that was one of the ones that we looked at um, a bit different. I mentioned that we uh, all departments had a three percent cut. Veterans was probably the only was the only one that we didn't cut, and um, their budget this year is one o one o nine, and we funded it at um, one nineteen, which was the department head request. 
So we funded it at a level that the department had requested. No, because we we recognize that it was we handled it differently than every other budget, because it, exactly for those reasons. Another question regarding this. Uh, you know, I think that uh, I commend you for the effort to get this thing pulled together under the circumstances that we we face. Uh, Just in relation to health insurance itself, that we're talking additional hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars. Moving towards again, our goal is to try and move to the zero. That reflects a zero. Yes. It reflects a zero from the point of view of a plan and the cost of a plan. So the cost based of on the, the plan, status quo, this, this is anticipation of what could happen as a result of the economy so and people getting laid off. So that's over and above the right. status quo of right. zero. Exactly. And uh, the rate sheet is in your packet um, tonight. It's I think it's attached to my report. If you uh, you just kind of tap down to it, um, I, I just ask you to take a look at it real quick because I think it's kind of confirms what your understanding is. Right. Um, go down to the biggest block, HMO blue current benefits. You see the current individual rate. And the current family rate, and then you see with the changes that those rates are actually a couple dollars less. So that does exactly what the board intended. Literally a couple of dollars, two dollars. Yeah, a couple dollars. dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> a couple less. dollars. Yeah, two dollars less. <laughs> and so our share of that is seventy percent. And if we had done nothing, it would have been a six point four percent increase. with the chief, what you think the staffing level is going to be. I mean, we're going to be appropriating a, a dollar amount in the salary line item for police department anyway. But as far as the staffing level and stuff, but specifically for the new fiscal year, the board will be informed as to what I anticipate it being. I need to get back to you with a staffing plan, including the number of reserves and also the status of the, uh, the abatements and the award. Before the next, well before the next meeting. Yep. I think the message is the budget number is the budget number. Right. Flexibility in terms of what might make the best sense, we'd like to hear from your chief. Right. Well, the administrator. Yeah. Well, the administrator. Give me the administrator. Yeah. So I'll have all the details. We can have a discussion about these things all over again. <laughs> More time, I promise. Are there items on your report? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, board members, if you could just refer back to the yellow sheet, I'll start at the top. Um, you have notice uh, from the ABCC. We're scheduling the appeal hearing for the Center Cafe. It was originally scheduled to take place this Wednesday. Um, at the request of the appellant, the uh, hearing date has been moved to July 8th. people who may be watching or interested in that hearing and we've done our best to get notice out to them. It's it, what time? 11.30 a.m. I said p.m. I am. <laughs> I no, no, no. I was hoping I, you wouldn't catch it though. I, I, <laughs> no, that wasn't it. I That went right over my head. I had uh, 12 noon. Oh, yeah. It's it's uh, 11.30 on the 8th. And it was requested that the chair be there. Is that what I heard? Chair or a member of the board, or members of the board. Three members. So, if you wish to delegate, it. <laughs> we were looking for another assignment. There are no vacations. Should we send our attorney? <laughs> there are no vacations here. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over two because we already went through the budget. Uh, Senator Tom made reference.